Joining us in the studio to discuss medical interventions on the front line is Dr. John Mark Boala. Thank you uh, for joining us in the news. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, there seem to be indication that people are not taking the relevance of this lockdown um, to heart. There are some who don't even now believe that the virus is in Africa. Is it a situation of inadequate communication or miscommunication? Yeah, the, the, these are current occurrences that we are seeing, especially with the behaviors of uh, some of our youth on, in Lagos here and probably some other cities in Nigeria. Is sad and is unfortunate. Uh, COVID-19 is real. This, this respiratory illness is real. So we all need to uh, pay attention. It is not really because there's no much information. However, we have to also agree that there are certain um, people, certain group of individuals that uh, the um, means of transmission, the means we use in transmitting some of this information like social media, um, either TV or radio, might not even reach a certain, certain group of people. So uh, we need to re-strategize and uh, engage further, probably by talking to the community uh, leaders, they are um, maybe village heads or local government chairman, youth leaders, religious bodies to um, reach this group of individuals. But in general, um, so far, the rate of um, uh, transmission of information, media, as the CDC, I think it's um, robust, but we need to extend it further to this group of individuals. What specific um, occurrences at the front line worries you at this moment or that are commendable? Um, well, in general, um, most of the states that we have this um, high rate, the coordination has picked up. Lagos was in the front line, was doing well from beginning and is still doing well. The only area that we are lagging is the testing. Um, but hopefully soon it will pick up. But we, we are far back uh, in terms of number of um, testing being carried out and this is very, very crucial. Now prevention, um, we're also doing good. Uh, we just noticed that some states are, are kind of out of panic doing um, extra things like uh, decontamination, even when they didn't record any, any case. So when they run out of resources, they might face problems. So they need to actually prioritize what they're doing. What has been the effect of the um, coronavirus on other sectors, um, on other um, aspects of hospice care? I mean, hospitals, private hospitals, mm. and you know, because we know that there are specific areas where this treatment and these isolation uh, is being done away from the normal hospitals that we have. How? What has been the impact so far? Yes, um, there are some cases reported. Um, this is also not proper. We also know that many hospitals are not equipped to handle these cases, and that will also lead them to contaminating other patients that are not uh, COVID. Let, so, let's talk about the safety measures first, before yes. we talk about the other aspect. What are some of the um, safety measures in some of those hospitals? Because people still might need to use them for other purposes. Exactly. So um, in general, hospitals need to set up a system whereby they will be able to screen people right before they get in. And when we mean screening, it's not only about testing, but triaging them and pick out what, this, what is this case. Is it a case of an accident? Is it a fracture? Is it a known case? Or is it a pregnant woman that didn't have any exposure? So they need to have a section outside the hospital before the person gets in. And they have to be properly catered. A hospital means of prevention has to be totally different with the social one not just social distancing a meter or two between patients or between individuals is not, is not enough and it's not possible in hospital. Um, certain masks might not be very effective in hospital. So they have to be properly geared up. They have to have um, safety goggles. They have to have a shield and in some cases even their gown. So is they, this happening? Of course not. So private health cares need to invest in that. They need to know that they have to have these measures in place. And also create certain section, divide their hospital into two, no matter how small it is. Have one section to attend to people and one area that is reserved in case that section is contaminated or you feel that you have seen a suspected case there, you can easily decontaminate that area while using the other side. They should also have that in terms of their staff. 
if you have 10 personnel, you divide them into two. So you have two teams. Uh, team A maybe to work for one week, whole period, and then the other team will work the next uh, following week. In case one of them attend to somebody that has a suspected case and let on confirm, then you know that you have to quarantine the whole of those group. So that's very useful. And try not to see patients that have any form of respiratory illness in the same area you are attending to other cases, especially your unknown cases. We hospital. know that uh, we have a lot of private hospitals uh, in this country. Do you think they have the capacity to be safe, like you mentioned, or they might choose the road of shutting down? Um, well, if they shut down, it might be risky because this, uh, the, the, you can imagine a child that is two years having febrile conversion the parents can attend to them at home. So we would not advise uh, to say, okay, shut down just because you are little. No matter how little, we can get there. I mean, this hospital, any hospital that has been run must have a doctor. And this doctor is, has to be informed. And it's, some of these measures don't cost much. They just need reorganization. Um, you can apply for hospital, yes, we have to use the appropriate gears. But for individuals, like we know, we can use some supplement, something different in terms of the mask if you don't have the, the right one. But this is something that needs to be enforced. The CDC, the Federal Minister of Health, needs to talk to the organizations of uh, private health practitioners to buy into this. All right, let's talk about the um, cases of unethical practices. The NCDC has warned, even the federal government has told us that the people that have the specialty to deal with this, uh, this crisis at this time is the NCDC, any affiliate of the NCDC. Or well, we have cases, at least the second that I know of was just um, reported yesterday, 51 year old doctor um, has died of the coronavirus. What do you have to say to this at this moment? Um, Shouldn't they be um, a bit more responsible in their approach to this matter as against, because I mean, you talked about private hospitals being, staying relevant. Are they looking at the gains that they may get from treating these people privately as against you know, the spread, containing the spread of this virus? Yeah, um, monetary gain is one thing, uh, but however, I mean, if you break the law, uh, they should find a way to find them. As, uh, and sometimes in these cases, it can go up to the level of shutting down such facilities. And we tend to forget quickly. During Ebola, we had cases like that. And one, one of the cases, the patient even survived and the doctor died. So it's unfair to actually put the life of other people in danger because if you're a doctor in private facility, you, you, you don't see only in one case. You will see that patient, attending to that patient and thinking that you are taking some measures and control and then attend to other patients, you know, which is very sad because the CDC centers are dealing with only in confirmed cases. So it will reduce the exposure. And those people attending to the patient there, they are well controlled. They don't go to other places to attend to patients. And these are some of the things we look at. Don't just look at your own gain because you're endangering the life of other people, patients, I mean, the he public, has lost his and the life family. As a result. It, and it as might a result, not yes. be a conscious thing, but there is yes. a resultant effect. And we know that there are people who have been in contact with him might, that might not be aware. He might have treated patients. Exactly. And all of that. Huge implications. Exactly. All right, let's look at the other aspects of this the non disclosure, the analysis. Announcement was given without the name of the doctor or the hospital uh, itself. Isn't there something flawed with this uh, position of non-disclosure when there is a health crisis like this, so that people who had been in that hospital could come out and get themselves tested? Sometimes, when an information is new, they, they, it might not we might not have the, the, the full detail yet. Uh, they, they need to carry out certain investigations, I believe. So definitely it, it will come out and they might, at the background, already uh, doing contact tracing if they are aware of the, the facility. Um, but this just before now, I, I got an information that uh, about the, the location and, and where he was working and also if he's a locum and stuff like that. So I think more and more information are coming out. But yes, it, it, sometimes it's relevant to act quickly because time is of essence. Um, if the name of the hospital is disclosed on time, uh, people that have 
concern for their health will remain in one place because maybe somebody is on essential duty and has been to that clinic, you can report to that place of work and say, hey, I was at this clinic around this period, so I have to probably self-isolate. I want to thank you very much for coming on the news. Thank you for having me.